This is a story about little Sally. Sally lives with her mom and dad and her cat and her sister Jen. All Sally wants for Christmas is a blue button eye teddy bear. Sally's mother looked in every store in the shop for this little teddy bear. Store after store told her that they were sold out until Sally's mom came across a dingy old pawn shop. An old scrunchy man sat behind the counter, right behind a shelf behind him, and there was the blue button eye teddy bear. The old man told Sally's mom that he wasn't selling it, but for a few extra bucks, she convinced him to sell the bear. Ecstatic, she ran home and wrapped the box up for Christmas. The days go by, and ground gets blanketed with snow. Christmas is finally here. Sally's eye opens as she jumps out of bed. Christmas is here, she states as she runs down the stairs. The smell of peppermint apple pie filled her nose, body with sentimental feelings, and things that she'll remember forever. Sally's mom and dad sit on the couch, sipping their coffee, listening to Christmas songs. Jen stumbles down the stairs, half asleep. She takes a seat on the couch, and Sally tears open her presents, one after another. Jen opens up hers, and mom and dad hid their whiskey for later. Sally reaches for the last box of her name on it. She tore it open and screamed with delight at the sight of her new bear. The rest of Christmas was spent trying out new toys and products, visiting relatives, drinking eggnog with apple pie. Night came and rain began to fall, and Sally fell asleep with Charlie, her new teddy bear. While watching Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Jen went upstairs to her room to explore her new items, and Sally's mom and dad went to their rooms, enjoying a fresh bottle of whiskey. Jen sits in her room, listening to music, talking to her friends, and she pulls out what appears to be a cigarette, except it's twisted on both ends. She begins smoking, her door creaks open, laughing out loud. She failed to hear as she lays on her stomach and feels a sudden, sharp jolt fly up her spine. Her, she is paralyzed to her head, and then hits the pillow as black spots appear on her eye. She sees blood-soaked sheets from the corner of her eye. Her heart beats so fast it hurts. She passes out and bleeds to death. Rain washes over the snow, and the window patters against the glass. Sally's mom and dad lay on the bed drunk, watching late-night television shows. Their door opens wide open, and a light from the television begins to pour out of the open door. Sally's father saw something crawl under the bed. He assumed it was a cat and continued to watch television. Sally's mother drifts off to sleep. Her father shuts the TV off and lays down. Several hours later, Sally's mom wakes up, bouncing in bed. Turning to see her husband, he saw his face and eyes were gouged out with multiple stab wounds around the neck. Blood oozed from the wounds and Sally's mom was about to scream. A sharp pain for half a second went across her throat, then she choked on her own blood and bef for a minute, before dying. Sally lays on the couch. She wakes up and notices the absence of Charlie. As she gets up, she sees Charlie standing in the doorway, blending in with the darkness. It's just you and me now, Sally. Thank you, Charlie, Sally responded. When the police came several weeks later, Sally's sister was found to have 36 stab wounds on her back. Her father's eyes were gouged out in his neck. Oh, his neck was cut open and was also stabbed 29 times. Her mother's throat was cut and Sally and the teddy bear were never found. This case remains open. Okay. That may have been the shittiest pasta I've actually ever read. Normally, I wouldn't read this, but dear God, this was awful. Um, apparently this, if you go on the Creepypasta wiki and go under demons, because that's where I'm getting a lot of my most recent stuff from, you get to find this lovely little section. Dear God, the, this can't get any more generic. Creepy doll, ooh, shady person who doesn't want to sell the doll with like, you know, looks scrabby and he's an old guy and he probably has some mysterious stuff about him. 
And then the doll starts stabbing and killing people the first night. No build up, no nothing. You don't even understand what's happening cuz I mean like apparently the thing was trying to be poetic or something, but it doesn't seem poetic. It just seems contrived and awful. Oh my gosh. Why can't why does this why is this on the wiki? This is just I mean like you can't get any more generic. There is nothing more generic than this pasta. I'm like, I know there's a lot of generic pastas that are out there, and I used to try to avoid them, but this is a shit pasta. Next time I plan on doing fucking more. Oh my gosh, this is probably the worst thing I've ever read. Hope you guys have a good one. This is That Creepy Reading. Watch my videos first on Patreon, and also, my artist does commissions, so if you're looking for art for something. In the link in the description, she's very cheap to send, tell her I send you, and she probably got you a good deal. This has been That Creepy Reading, and I'm signing off.